see things, decide on things quicker and move quicker. So it's not, it's a little bit, a little bit less jerky. So I think they're, I think they're going to go, I think they're going to, 13 is going to allow it to get to unsupervised. It's going to get the safety stats maxed out. And then there's going to be this massive focus on human like and comfort capability and then finishing out obviously all the features. But I think we're close. I think we're close close, to that kind of that tipping point. It's interesting that uh, they released 13.2 and uh, they were saying 13.3 was the one that's going to go wide release. So a wave of 13.2.1 is now going out an hour after initial wave and twice the quantity of vehicles. This wave includes all these different uh, um, base uh, vehicles, uh, software versions. Here's the release note for 13.2.1. It's the same release note as they've released um, for the employees when they received it. But like you've been pointing out that um, five times training compute, data scaling, all these kind of, um, you know, the late reduced photon control latency, you ta- you talked about that. So it's rolling out not only to customers, but including the Cybertruck owners. That was interesting. And it's going out to Canada. Uh, I think we, we, at this point, we're still seeing only AI4 cars getting it. I thought this was a funny exchange. Omar says, my Cybertruck has been sitting there looking sad. FSE 13 came out. I think I'll take her out tonight. Being behind on FSE really makes the best Tesla a lot less useful. Choosing between best FSE and best ride comfort is always a tough choice. Cybertruck replied going, this is neglect. Ashok, don't make me call Cybertruck Protective Services. And Ashok said, are you happy now? Because they did release it to to that. Elon said, Tesla has the best real world AI by far. And we're going to go through some videos there. Any, Any comments about that so far? Yeah, the best real world AI comment is is not getting picked up enough by media, but there is a little bit of an undercurrent. First off, you had some of the hyperscalers and some of the end app developers saying, "Mm, I see kind of this wall forming and, you know, maybe it's just not more compute. Others are like, that's BS, you know, just keep going. So there's already a little bit of a divide there. Meanwhile, Tesla is just plowing forward. And if you start thinking about the other things out there, and I don't want to pick on any one thing. Um, but you think about Copilot, you think about some of these other kind of, you know, end, you know, users, edge solutions that are in the hands of users. And then you think about Tesla and real world AI, and you think about the number of tokens being processed or just the, the amount of information that comes in and the amount of control that comes out. I always think, like, think about the language models and think about copilot and think about well things it's seen and like what kind of how much useful output are you getting how much bad output how much false output are you getting from these things right now it's still at a very high rate that you can't have that with tesla real world ai it's got to be you know 99.99x you know in terms of what it sees in controlling the vehicle properly and that's why i just think it's so far ahead and elon makes this very subtle one line statement about you know Tesla has the best real world AI and it's 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 very powerful because they do and it, we're, we're, there's a bit of there's a huge bit of alpha here because the number of people that have been exposed to FSD is still in the fractions of a tenth of a percent of people in the United States for example the more people that see this and are exposed to this and and know that they can actually go and buy it and literally from their smartphone they can go buy this and have the car within a couple of weeks and and then download this software for less than 100 bucks a month it's free in the beginning i think it's going to blow people away and we're i think we're going to i think the the fsd adoption ramp is going to have a a bit of that discontinuity as well where it's just it's just going to have a a fairly big step up uh, and you're also going to see it now, you know, going to different countries, which is going to be even a bigger driver of adoption. We're about to report. We're about to report on that FSD in China, but um, let's go and take a look at FSD in action now. You got Zach um, Black Model Three uh, version 13 is mind blowing. Here's the here's the first drive video with FSD 13.2.1. 30 min- 31 minutes from parking lot to parking spot with zero disengagements or interventions. I can't believe yeah. how smooth it is. It's incredible. I'm going to play quickly his video. And uh, it's funny because all these people are dropping these videos and they're boring. There's really nothing to see, (laughs) you know, like it's just ghosts. And it's like no interventions. This is fun. 
I mean, it's basically everybody's going to start stop dropping uh, start dropping these videos, and it looks like that it's doing really really well. Any uh, thinking on, the, on this? Yeah, Herbert, I I actually bought a camera. I'll I'll oh, reveal this good. to everyone. I actually did buy a camera for the vehicle as well, and I thought maybe I could do since the rides are going to be so boring. <laughs> I could talk about boring, you know, supply chain topics or, or something, you know, boring like that to go along with, with the ride. It's going to be so boring and maybe occasionally narrate on, on what the car is doing, but no, just, uh, yeah, these, these, I, I, I appreciate, especially the, uh, the first four, um, you know, uh, Omar, JD, Chuck and, 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 and Chris and dirty Tesla, you know, they get these releases early, they get out there, they drive them. They get the video up so everybody can just see it for themselves. They narrate it. They talk through it. And they're really, what you really have to gather from their voices and what they're saying is what's the relative improvement and what are the, you know, what are still the key open issues? And it's still, it's, you know, it, what I'm hearing in this release is way more human like. And then you get in, you press one button and, you know, you go from point to point. That's huge. So they're, they're literally adding features. Finally, I think for the audience, Herbert, I, I want to draw this, this correlation because it, it kind of brings the whole conversation back together, back to Elon's comment of the best real world AI. Look at the advancements that's happened in your Tesla. If you've owned a Tesla for the last two years or the last five years, look at your experience from when you bought a Tesla five years ago. And you got and you get in your car and what you saw in the vehicle, what the user interface was, the the fact that you had to drive it yourself. And now look five years later, and now with this V13 release, you get in your vehicle and you just say where you want to go. It appears quickly on the screen. You press one button to drive and you go. And it literally brings you there and parks your car. Yeah. Take that, put it to the left. Now Pick up, and I'm going to case on my own industry for a bit. Pick up your smartphone and look at your smartphone. Does your smartphone screen when you wake it up look meaningfully different than it did five years ago? The answer is not really. Does your smartphone do things now that it did meaningfully different five years ago? The answer is, well, yeah, it's taking better pictures. It's, do, it's doing some, you know, there's been this kind of gradual just iterative improvement. But in general, if you picked up a phone from five years ago, you can still take some pretty great photos, have some pretty good battery life, and really run all the apps that are out there running today. You could run um, on your phone right now. So what's happening is, is there's billions of units in that industry hundreds of thousands, if not millions of, I would say millions of people either building apps or working on the hardware, the software to get these products shipped. And here you got this small couple hundred person team in Tesla and look what they've done to the driving experience. Compare again, just in the last five years of sitting in your car and what that real world now, real world AI experience is. And now you're going to be able to get in soon with CyberCab. You're going to get into a vehicle. There's going to be no steering wheel, no pedals, and to me, the corollary in the smartphone world would be is there's not, you know, a hundred apps on my phone. There's just one button I press and I just tell the phone what I wanted, what I want it to do. I should be able to pick my phone up and say, Hey, look at my portfolio and tell me if I should be doing any tax loss selling, give me three right. scenarios, tee them up. And then, you know, tee them up for my review, put them up there as a reminder. And then when I approve it, it should go into that app. It should trade it and it should, it should execute the trades. That would be the equivalent of what if, if, the, if the Android iOS world were operating at the same pace that Tesla is in terms of innovation with AI, that's the kind of things you should be able to do with your phone. But you, 